Hallelujah. So today uh, we want to get our teaching from 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter 4. Wafalme wapili. 2 Kings chapter 4. And this is what the Bible says. One day the widow of a member of the group of prophets came to Elisha and cried out, My husband who served you is dead, and you know how he feared the Lord. But now a creditor has come threatening to take my two sons as slaves. What can I do to help you? Elisha asked. Tell me, what do you have in the house? Nothing at all except a flask of olive oil, she replied. And Elisha said, borrow as many empty jars as you can from your friends and neighbors. Then go into your house with your sons and shut the door behind you. Pour olive oil from your flask into the jars, setting each aside when it is filled. So she did as she was told. Her sons kept bringing jars to her and she filled one after another. Soon every container was full to the brim. Bring me another jar, she said to one of her sons. They aren't anymore, he told her. And then the olive oil stopped flowing. When she told the man of God what had happened, he said to her, now sell the olive oil and pay your debts, and you and your sons can live on what is left over. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's go to Exodus chapter 4. Exodus chapter 4. But Moses, from verse 1, but Moses protested again. What if they won't believe me or listen to me? What if they say, the Lord never appeared to you? Then the Lord asked him, what is in your hand? A shepherd's staff, Moses replied. Throw it down on the ground, the Lord told him. So Moses threw down the staff and it turned into a snake. Moses jumped back. Then the Lord told him, reach out and grab its tail. So Moses reached out and grabbed its tail, and it turned back into a shepherd's staff in his hand. Perform this sign, the Lord told him. Then, then they will believe that the Lord, the God of their, their ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, the God of Isaac, sorry, and the God of Jacob really has appeared to you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I know many times you have had that question. What do you have in your hands? What do you have in your hands? And many a times, as believers, in our daily walk, we never look at what we have. We always look at what we don't have. That which you have, you do not, you do not, even, you do not even count it. You keep on counting, I don't have this. If you're a young woman or a young man, you're not even looking like at yourself and seeing you are alive. The Lord has given you an opportunity to be who you are, where you are. You're still saying, I, ado I do not have a spouse. I do not have a husband. I do not have a, a, a wife. If I get them, it will be okay. When you get them, it will, it will start again. I do not have children. I do not, I do not have a house. I do not have a car. When you get them, there will still be another thing. But it is time we come back to the, our senses that there is always something that God has put in your hands at any given time. Praise the Lord. And whatever God has put in your hands, remember this, that is the first point. Whatever God has put in your hands, that is what God is going to use to bless you, to lift you, to change the situations of even people around you. Praise the Lord. Some of us look for Look at things that, you know, when you, you don't have money, but you're able to touch other people by just being there for them. And you, you deny people love. You deny people comfort because you f believe that when you have money, you'll be able to bless them. It is not about the money. It is about what you have. And that which you have is what God uses. Praise the Lord. Even if you have money, let me, let me tell you something. Even if you are poor today, 
and you do not have love or you do not show kindness to your neighbors, even if you get money, you will never show kindness. Get me very well. Kama wewe haupendi majirani zako, kama wewe hauwajali, hauwafikiri, hata ukipewa mabilioni ya pesa, hautawafikiria. In fact, you will now want to prove to them that the Lord has lifted you. Praise the Lord. So, that which you have, and the most, the most important point you need to remember, that which you have, in the eyes of everyone, is always valueless. Seems so small. It, it looks insignificant. But that insignificant thing is what God uses to give you what you deserve. And he also uses to give himself glory. Praise the Lord. So that the, the widow did not have much. You know, when you're in debt, you can start looking. I have some chairs here I can sell. I have a television set. I have one, two. She only said, I have a small flask of olive oil. It was, it was small. Very small. Because olive oil was also very precious. So you'll never find it in people's homes in large quantities. She was already a widow. She was already in debt. The husband, you know, the husband has left her with debt. So whatever she had was very, very small, very insignificant. And when Elisha asked, what do you have in your house? She never remembered any other thing. I believe she had clothes. As, as a Jewish woman, she must have had some jewelry. It was a must. At, at least you'll have some necklaces, some earrings, some rings. But she only said, I have a small flask of olive oil. And without much ado, the prophet just told her, go to your house, ask for containers, and start filling them with that oil. And as she kept pouring the oil kept coming. And I want to imagine she started with a very small container. She must have started with testing. You know, you test with a small container. You see if something will happen. And the container was filled. And she added, eh, and it filled. And she continued until there was no jar left. If you look at it at man's, man's level, you will not see that that flask will make any impact in her life. And she, she did not even ask the way I ask. Alafu, eh? I have oil. Go and pour. And then she went first, followed the instruction, poured until everything was completely filled. Then she went back. Man of God, I have done what you have told me. What next? Then he told her, go and sell, pay the debts, and whatever will remain is for you and your sons. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I love her faith because she did not you know, she did not question a lot. And we also do that. When God gives you instructions based on something that looks insignificant, you, you first start asking, are you, sure, are you sure? Do you really understand? You know, God, do you really understand? Especially if the instructions are given to you by a man of God or a woman of God, you start asking, you know this, if the Lord was using you, you will have seen the situation I am in. You will not tell me to do something so insignificant. Praise the Lord. So many a times, we are waiting for God to do something big. Yet he wants to use that which is small in your life to already make the change that you want right now. Praise the Lord. Secondly, do not despise whatever you have in your hands. And I'm still using the same example. If you're not loving to your neighbors when you are poor, don't imagine when you become rich, you'll be loving. You are the people who will build houses and your, the rain in your compound will be flowing into your neighbor's compound because they are poor. You are the people when you drive along, you will wash everyone with mud because you have a car. But, and people will be wondering, this man, when he was poor, when he, yeah, when he was like us, when he was like us, now God has given him something small and he's very proud. So, if, if you're able to speak to people, if you're able, able to give comfort to people, when the Lord is, is using you to bring comfort, he will use that word that you, 
you give to people. Praise the Lord. And there are even people, as you walk around, there are people who are called pastors. You know, in, in our society, there are people who are called pastors. And many of them are not as blessed as we are. But when we sit down and listen, listen to them, they really create an impact in people's lives. And we despise them because they look poor. But that word in their life, that, that gifting, that ability that the Lord has given them is what the Lord will use to bless another person's life. I know there are places, if you enter, when you, when, you, when you want any spiritual help, you ask 10 people randomly, they'll always give you one answer. Because that person's life speaks that word. That person's life speaks about God. And when you look at them, at times you might not believe that such a kind of person, can they really impact in my life? So do not despise what the Lord has given you. Some of you are, are, are trusting God for multi-billion businesses. But that small business that you have of tomatoes, of a stock of a hundred, you are not faithful. You do not imagine that that hundred worth of business, hundred shillings worth of business is where your billions will come from. Change your mindset, praise the Lord. Change your attitude. Embrace the little things that the Lord has given us. And be willing, thirdly, be willing to move, trusting in the guidance of the Lord. You know, as that woman was, was, walk, as that woman was pouring the oil, she trusted in the guidance of the man of God. And she, she did as, I, I want to imagine if she had even told neighbors, I, you know, as in, she collected all the containers from the neighbors. She would have even gone to the next town and borrowed those containers again. She would still have had oil coming. And when she stopped working or when the container stopped, the oil stopped to flow. How far you can move with a gift is how far the Lord will use you. That is what I, I want to say. How far you are willing to move with your gift is how far the Lord will use you. The example of the men, uh, of the servants that were given talents by their, by their master, he gave each one of them according to their ability. One he gave five, one he gave three, and the other one he gave one. Each one of them, as far as they were willing to move with the talents, is how much they gained back. The one who hid the talent had the one one talent. And what happens when the owner of the gifts is taking stock? He will take what you have that you have not used and give another person who has. Who has used his very well. Praise the Lord. So if that one will have gone and invested, that one talent will have produced one other. That is if he worked with it. If he had decided to save it in a bank or whatever, that one will have gained interest. It might not have been one. It might not have brought back one, but it will have brought back a particular percentage. Maybe one point, you know, maybe half or a quarter or an eighth. But at least it will have brought back something. The far you are willing to move with the, what the Lord has given you is how far the Lord is willing to bless you. And if that is your source, if that is the source of all the other blessings you receive, if you are not willing to use, if you are not willing to move, you will never receive. You will always sit complaining. Utakuna angalia tu mwenzako ati, yeah, amebarikiwa, yeah, amebarikiwa, alikuja juzi, akanipata kwa ikanisa, mungu amemuinua, mbona mi mungu aniinui. Ata kuinua aje na utaki kusonga. Bona asifiwe. Ata kuinua aje na utaki kufaya nini? Kusonga. I, I, look, at, I look at people in, in this ministry. There are people who have stayed here for so long. And they keep on counting other people's blessings. Why? When you become familiar with a boss, you lose respect. You, you, you are not willing to work. You are not willing to move. And when someone else is moving, anything that is moving must create an impact. Any river that is moving brings life. Any river that is moving 
brings life. Any water mass that is not moving, in a kwa sewage. Are you aware? If there is water collected here and it is not moving, in a short, in a short while, you will find mosquitoes. In a short while, it will start stinking and will start draining. But the water that is moving brings life, makes a change. So when you're seated with what God has given you, either out of pride, either out of fear, either out of not being sure or not trusting what the Lord is saying, you will never change your situation. Bwana sifiwe. Na siku ya leo, I have come to remind you that whatever you have in your hand, that is what God wants to use. Not what is in another person's hand. Praise God. Even, even Moses, when he was being sent, he, he had his own imagination of the kind of person God will be sending. Or the kind of person God will be, will be using. One, he was imagining, I am a murderer. Two, he has, he has gone to Midian. He has married a woman who is not a Jew. So he had very many things that do not qualify him. He was a stammerer. He was old. And he was thinking, why wouldn't God just look for a young man who can speak well, who is strong? You know, Moses will not be able to fight as a young person. But the Lord used very simple things. What do you have? He said, I have a shepherd's staff. Why? Because Moses was a shepherd himself. He was taking care of, of, of his father's father-in-law's sheep. He was a shepherd. And that is what he knew how to use best. It was very insignificant at a time like that to go and face Pharaoh who had the most sophisticated knowledge. Because from back then, the Egyptians were very intelligent. And war, they had very powerful chariots. And just God wants to use a shepherd's staff. And that was the only thing that Moses was familiar with. And he moved. And that shepherd's staff became a snake, became a shepherd's staff. It made a way in the Red Sea. It brought water in the desert. It did a lot of things. Just that shepherd's staff. So do not start looking at uh, Mimi, I only have 1,000. I am waiting for my uncle to support me. Support you from where? That 1,000 you have is what the Lord wants to use. Praise the Lord. Because he wants to take the glory. So if your uncle gives you 100,000, so you will glorify God. You will thank God, yes, it is a miracle. You must thank God, it is a miracle that you will testify. My uncle... Bless me with 100,000 shillings to start a business. That will be a testimony. But who will you be accountable to? It will be him. Every day he will remind you, Kama siyo mimi, haunge kuwa apo. Your business is doing well. They don't buy from you. But they are telling you, if it were not for them, you will not be where you are. You marry. And when your wife stands up for herself, they will tell you, Kama siyo sisi tulipea uyo buwana yako pesa. Hata ange pata ya kukuo. And it will be about them, about them, about them, about them. So trust God that whatever little he has given you, that is what he wants to use. Praise the Lord. And I pray that you stop looking at what you don't have. Stop looking at what the other person has. Look at what you have. Praise God. Look at what you have. And I remind you, with the last, there was a teaching I gave you about thanking God for the things that we have not prayed for. Thanking God for the things that we have not looked for. Thanking God for the things that we have not cried for. Those are the things that God is using in your life to bless others, to change your life and to glorify himself. And as we walk with, in this journey, you must be alert and make a decision. Kila siku. Fanya maamuzi kila siku. To look at what God has given you. And use it. Fanya maamuzi kila siku. Kuona ni barakagani mungu wa mekupatia. Ambayo hauku lilia. Ambayo hauku ombea. Ambayo hauku garamika. Na kumshukuru. Na kuitumia. 
Bwana asifiwe. Ni maamuzi unafa it, it, it doesn't just happen because it, they are never remembered. You have to make a decision every day. Kwamba Mungu leo umeniamsha that I am able to tell you my my request that I'm able to tell you my heart's desire that I'm able to ask you for things thank god for that for this life thank god for your salvation thank god for that business that is insignificant thank god for that spouse who's giving you headache <laughs> praise the lord because that spouse who's giving you headache is the spouse that god is going to use for people to testify bona sifiwe or you think a very straightforward husband is always a testimony a very big testimony eh see the husband who gives you a headache is the one that you really testify about those of you who have good marriages you don't testify bona sif stop looking at me vibaya like that see it is si ni ukweli ni ukweli mumaona watu wako na raha kwa ndoa wakishuhudia ati bwana asifiwe eh, kwa ndoa yetu tunaendelea vizuri they only speak in couples forums in singles forums ndio hapo ndio mnasikia kwamba ndoa marriage works but if you want to hear testimonies the testimonies come from those people whose spouses are giving them headache whose spouses are making them go down and pray praise the lord okay Let me stop it there. Just remember that which the Lord has given you in your hands is what he wants to use. Praise God. And there are many examples in the Bible, but I will I will just give you those two. Na fanya maamuzi kila siku kuangalia ni nini Mungu amekupa. Bwana asifiwe. Kuangalia ni nini? Ni nini Mungu amekupa. Hallelujah. We can rise up in prayer. Unaniangalia vibaya. Today I'm not declaring because the declarations are already done, si ndio? Hata ile ngombe nilisema hapa kama mchezo wa tea, eh, kuna ngombe imelala mnafikiri itaamka, iliamka. Mulisikia nikisema? Mulisikia nikisema? Mulijua eti kulikuwa na ngombe? Hata amuku jua. Lakini iliamka ya mtu. Bwana asifiwe. And I thank God because that person the the following the first the first testimony for sunday morning was that one and i thank god because that person valued that cow as the only thing that the lord had given them for blessing and the lord will use those small things praise the lord i have i have had a lot of testimony we keep tumepata shuhuda nyingi but we will we'll organize for the same praise the lord So raise up your hands. And my declaration over your life, nisikize. Kile ambacho naenda kuzungumza kuhusu maisha yako ni kwamba Mungu akuonyeshe kile ambacho anataka utumie. Kile ambacho amekupa ambacho anataka kutumia. Bwana asifiwe. Na as the Lord will speak over your life this morning start acting on it anza kushughulika anza kufanya kazi anza kusonga anza kutumia hicho ambacho Mungu amekupa and before the end of this year before that by, by the time we are finishing this physical year inaisha 31st of December and by the time we are finishing 40 days of prayer you will come back and and say and see and see how your life has been from now up to that time Some of those things are the keys to your destinies. Lakini mumeficha you you do not bother about them. But those are the keys to your destinies. Praise the Lord. Forget to subscribe to the channel by clicking on the subscription button on the right. For all prayer requests and information, call the number on the screen. First Corinthians